Hi, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about the Llama adapter, which has become very popular after the release of Llama models. So what is Llama adapter? Llama adapter, uh, as the name says, it is a lightweight adaption method to efficiently fine tune the Llama model into, a, into an instruction following model. So recently, Alpaca uh, was fine tuned from Llama models using 52K self-instruct demonstrations. So can we do that more efficiently is the question which for which Llama adapter is the answer. Right? So um, compared to Alpaca, uh, which took several hours for fine tuning, the Llama adapter basically claims to uh, take just one hour fine tuning on 8 800 GPUs. Uh, uh, rather than fine tuning the entire 7 billion parameters, they freeze the Llama 7 billion parameters and only fine tune the 1.2 million adapter parameters. So uh, and and then uh, um, also um, there, there is this uh, plug with expertise kind of uh, um, kind of facility. Basically, meaning you know it just has adapters uh, which are very lightweight, 1.2 million pluggable adapters per task. So if you're fine tuning for a particular task, you use certain adapters for another task. You could use other 1.2 million adapters. It also can do multimodal fine tuning, multimodal instruct based fine tuning, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, so here is essentially examples of instruction following capacity, and here is an example of multimodal reasoning. So you know, instruction following, you can basically uh, give instructions or demonstrations of this kind with the president of Mexico, and uh, you know expected to generate the answer. And uh, multimodal reasoning basically means uh, you know tasks like visual question answering, where you can actually give an image and a question, and then expect it to come up with the right answer. Uh, so the way this adapter works is that um, in Llama's higher transformer layers, so Llama is a transformer architecture, of course. So in the higher layers, uh, you prepend a set of learnable adaptation adaption prompts uh, to the input instruction tokens. Right. So it is very much like prefix tuning to some extent, but uh, somewhat different because in prefix tuning uh, kind of methods, you either uh, essentially include these learnable parameters only in the embedding or essentially through and through in the entire transformer network. But these guys basically just do it in the last L layers, and uh, these prompts uh, basically learn to adaptively inject new instructions or conditions uh, into the frozen Llama model. Okay. Uh, also, beside, also uh, unlike uh, prefix tuning methods, they also have a specific gating mechanism and a zero initialized attention, which I will talk about in the next few slides. So how does Llama adapter work? Let's look at, uh, look at it in more detail. So on the right side, what you see is, uh, uh, you know, the blue colored thing is a typical transformer L layer architecture. So, you know, these are L different layers of the transformer architecture. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, in fact, N different layers. So we consider an, uh, a transformer with N different layers, of which in the last L layers, you are basically going to uh, put up, uh, um, uh, you're going to add these adapters. Right? So essentially in the first N minus L layers, there are no adapters. In the last L layers, there are going to be some adapters also. So you have these adapters as the first K tokens, and then, uh, you know, uh, and then there are M tokens of uh, typical words. Okay? So we insert prompts into the topmost L layers, and then there are K positions for the prompt and M positions for the words. Um, now that basically means that uh, um, uh, you know, if you consider any particular layer, the output size of that layer will be k plus m into c, where c is the embedding size. So k tokens for prompt and the m tokens for the words. Okay. Uh, so we'll call the prompt part as capital P and the words part as the capital T. Okay. Um, now, if you consider a particular position L, so just consider a particular position L, and for that particular position small L, and for that position you're trying to come up with uh, uh, a revised representation. Uh, or transform representation uh, for that particular position. So the way typically you do is to basically do QK transpose, and that defines your uh, your attention weight, right? And then you do softmax on top of it, and so on. And then multiply by the value vectors so as to get the revised representation. Now here, you do the same thing. You essentially compute uh, um, uh, uh, compute uh, uh, the overall uh, um, uh, attention weights as uh, two different weights. I mean, of course, you do QL into K, uh, you know, QK transpose kind of stuff. But then you uh, keep these uh, attention weights for the prompt part separate from the attention weights over the other words in the entire uh, uh, entire entire input. Yeah. So as you can notice, as as you can see, you know each of those SLK basically is a k-sized uh, or rather uh, overall SLK is a k-sized vector, and SL m plus one is basically m plus one sized vector, uh, denoting the attention weights uh, for each of the m uh, words in the uh, in the input. 
So, um, and then you apply softmax to them individually. So you apply a softmax to the prompt part separately and the words part separately. Now, uh, and uh, uh, while applying the softmax to the uh, prompts part, uh, you essentially also have this gating function GL, which controls uh, how much of an importance you want to give to the prompt part versus how much importance you want to give to the words part. And then once you have that, you basically just multiply it with the value vectors VL, so just to get the transform representation TL output. Okay, so that's that. Um, now, um, uh, clearly this GL is initialized to zero in the beginning, so as to uh, not cause any trouble uh, right in the beginning. So in the beginning, you know, when, uh, um, you, you know, um, uh, when you don't want to use any part of the adapters, they have not learned anything much, so you don't want to use them. In that case, GL is basically zero, so you therefore zero initialize it, so that, uh, so that at the beginning it just works like a typical llama model. But then over time you fine tune, you tune, you you basically over time you sort of train these GL parameters also along with uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, parameters for the adapters so that uh, um, so that this becomes more and more meaningful so that uh, uh, the, the adapters start adding more value with respect to conditioning the typical working of the llama model. So GL of course is head specific. So if you have multiple heads uh, which are typically present, you essentially have one GL per head. It is zero initialized and updated via pack propagation. How can we use Llama adapter for multimodal reasoning? Well, um, you know, uh, given an input image as the visual context, which is the case in VQA kind of task, visual question answering task. For example, in this task, here is an image as input, and then you have a question, um, you know, uh, 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 there's also some text content along with it. A baby wants to know what is inside. And then there's a question, which force from the baby opens the door and the uh, options are A pull, B push, and the expected answer is of course A pull. Right. So in this particular case, the way um, the Llama adapter is used is to take the visual content. Um, you have a visual encoder, for example, you could use clip, and uh, that, that, that visual encoder basically gives you multi-scale features for from the image. Uh, let's say you essentially get like uh, uh, M different capital M different features of different sizes, right? You concatenate all of those features and uh, uh, then project them. So you concatenate all of those features and then you project them to uh, a single vector, uh, which is of size C, which is of the size embedding dimension, uh, which is of the size equal to the embedding dimension of the llama model, right? Uh, now you repeat this k times so that it basically forms the k prompts per layer, and then you of course repeat, uh, you know, you essentially. Uh, repeat it across uh, across various layers in the uh, uh, in the transform model. Okay. So this IP vector is repeated k times so as to uh, form k different vectors which are prepended at each layer. And of course, you essentially uh, element wise add these k length adaptation prompts in L of, uh, in all of those L inserted transformer layers. So that's how basically you use llama adapter for multimodal reasoning. So how does llama adapter perform? Well, there are several experiments that they do. First, uh, uh, you know, uh, but the configuration remains the same for all of them. You use pre-trained llama model, seven billion, and with n equal to thirty-two layers. So pre-trained llama seven billion model has thirty-two layers. You use prompt length of ten, and uh, you basically inject uh, the the uh, the llama adapters, uh, the llama adapter prompts into the last uh, thirty layers. Um, so um, uh, what they did was a GPT-4 based evaluation on a set of eighty questions, human generated questions. So um, uh, with respect to alpaca. So what they observed is that uh, um, in uh, several cases, alpaca and alpaca lora, in several cases you observe, you know, uh, that uh, um, the llama adapter model is better uh, compared to both alpaca and alpaca lora. Uh, if you compare from efficiency perspective, while well, alpaca basically, basically requires 7 billion parameters, lora requires much lesser, 4.2 million parameters to be trained, to be fine-tuned, right? Uh, while llama adapter requires much lesser. From a storage space perspective, okay, again, alpaca is huge, right? But uh, uh, even compared to alpaca lora, llama adapter is even smaller. From a training time perspective, uh, alpaca adapter again takes much lesser amount of time. So that's the nice part about uh, uh, the the, uh, the the main evaluation of the uh, llama adapter model. Now, they also evaluate the multimodal, uh, uh, you know, uh, capability of llama adapter model. So on science queue data set. Science Q data set basically contains a visual, uh, you know, uh, several examples. Each example containing a visual context, textual context, and a question and multiple options from which you have to choose the right answer. Uh, they compare with various methods and they observe that their llama adapter model with a very small number of parameters, you know, uh, gives really good accuracies, really good question answering accuracy. Um, so this one is the text only model, so you don't give the image, while this one is basically, uh, you know, text plus image. 
So what you observe is that just with 1.8 million uh, adapter parameters, it's basically able to get the best accuracy uh, compared to even models like GPT-3 or GPT-3 with chain of thought prompting or uh, MMCOT, MM, MM chain of thought prompting and so on, right? So that's that. Now, although GPT-3 is basically queried using uh, uh, zero, short, um, uh, zero short kind of evaluation, um, and therefore, basically, it says tune parameters are zero, but then notice that GPT-3 is a huge model. It's a very large model, right? So that's that. They also try to use Llama adapters, not just with the, the Llama model, but actually take those adapters and also apply the same uh, te technique, right? Z zero initialize attention and uh, have some prompts in the as prefixes to the last uh, um, you know, L layers, um, and then you have a gating mechanism and so on. So you, they tried the same technique with the other adapter, other transformer models like VIT for vision and Roberta for text. And what they find is the following. So, uh, so this is uh, results for vision model fine tuning with VIT uh, B16 on VTAB 1K data set. And what they find is that their zero initialization, techno zero initialization technology gives them really good results across several subsets, right? Uh, now, of course, they don't call it Llama adapter here because there's no longer this is no longer Llama. It's basically just an adapter with zero initialization. So uh, they basically comparison with several other um, efficient fine tuning methods shows that uh, their their method is much better. Now they also do the same thing for language model fine tuning for Roberta Large on squared question answering data set. And they observe that the results are uh, way better with the, the zero initialization method compared to prefix prefix tuning uh, methods or full fine tuning method as well. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about Llama adapter, which is a lightweight adaptation method uh, to efficiently tune Llama into an instruction following model. It is better than LoRa. I mean, at least the results show that uh, they it is more lightweight than LoRa and faster than more efficient than LoRa as well. Right. So it just involved 1.2 million parameters when fine tuning uh, or instruction tuning Llama uh, 7 billion parameter model with 52K instruction prompts uh, can be done within one hour on 8 800 machines, 8 800 uh, GPU machine. Uh, the Llama adapter follows the principle of zero initialized uh, attention with gating mechanism, and we also saw that it is generalizable to multimodal reasoning and for other uh, transformer like models uh, like, like VIT and Roberta. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you like the video. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.